Hey Threadheads, Darren here. Welcome back to another fly tying tutorial. Today we're going to be tying a Thunder Creek pattern. This one's designed by Keith Fulcher and actually appears in the David Klossmeyer collaboration with Keith. And this is called a Blueback Trout Thunder Creek. And of course, as you can see, it's a Thunder Creek pattern with the distinctive folded back reverse tied head. And um, it's one of the more simplified versions because this one doesn't have any uh, materials on the body and it's basically just the head and the wing so i'm going to take you through the steps on how to tie this it's best to tie these on a straight high hook like a partridge cs5 a daiichi 2370 a mustad 36 620 or a Daiichi 1750 or something similar. They're a little bit hard to find, but hopefully you can get your hands on some. Let's have a look at the material list and get started. get a fresh hook in the vise. Now, as I said before, the hooks are a little bit tough to find sometimes. Today I'm using a Partridge CS5. One of the other hooks that I really like for this pattern is the Gaelic Supreme. And it's a Gaelic Supreme Thunder Creek. And those might be fairly hard to find as I don't think they're being produced anymore. I could be mistaken. For thread, uh, I sometimes use a flat wax nylon, but today we're going to be using a finer thread. We're going to be using a Benici, I think this is a uh, 10 knot or 8 knot thread. I'm not exactly sure. You can play around and see what works best for you. But this kind of helps keep the head sort of small and compact. So we'll start by tying on right behind the eye. And we just want to kind of establish how big we want our head. We'll just snip off that tag end. You want to be conscious from the start on how big your head is. And sometimes I'll just take fly that I like the measurement on and I'll just kind of compare that. And that'll give me a good guideline. I like my heads on the Thunder Creeks to be a little longer and uh, less round. So a little bit more oval shaped I guess. So the first material we're going to use we're going to take a small pinch of orange bucktail and we're just going to tease out any of the really short fibers there and we'll just kind of roughly even those up by hand. Now I've said it before on a few different patterns I don't like to have stuff too symmetrical so if you wanted to go ahead, you can always put this in a hair stacker just to align the tips a little bit better. I'm actually going to link a, uh, a video from uh, Barry that he did not too long ago. Uh, it's an excellent uh, tutorial on splitting bucktail and uh, lining the tips. We'll just go ahead and we're going to tie that on at the beginning of our head. I'm going to cut those butt ends. I'm going to cut them off at a 45 degree angle just to kind of keep the front of the hook right behind the eye fairly sparse. So we got that lashed on. We'll go ahead and we'll kind of bind it down a little more, compress those fibers. You don't want to compress them too much near the back because that'll kind of flare your wing out really soon. We're going to take a couple strands of blue crystal flash. Uh, this is a pearl dyed blue can also use a metallic blue, which I find really nice. So I've just taken those and uh, folded them in half and cut them. So now essentially I've got four strands and we'll just measure those out to the length of the wing. We'll tie those in on the side and then we'll take those crystal flash, we'll take it over the top and around to the back side, and we'll bind it down along the back on the side of the hook shank. We'll just trim those off just to be flush with the tail. So 
So next we're going to put our belly on. So we'll just flip the hook. If you don't have a rotary vise, just take the hook out and flip it over. Again, we're going to take a small clump of bucktail. You want to cut this down to the base. The longer you have, the better. We'll take out the smallest fibers and we'll just stack that by hand. And just kind of roughly get the tips aligned. So for this, we just want to measure the length of the wing and then we'll pull that measurement to the front of the eye. And that will give us our length so that when we fold that bucktail back, it will match the tips of the orange um, bucktail that we have in the back there. So we'll want to try and keep that bucktail on the bottom of that hook shank as much as possible. So I just pull it down, or pull it up, I guess. And as I tie it down, and then we'll clip that at the back and just be careful not to get any of those uh, crystal flash or the orange bucktail in there and we'll just clean up those wraps a little bit and again you can compress that just to keep that head nice and small another option if you wanted to you can always add a little bit of uh, lead wire on this head just to kind of give the fly a little bit of weight it's not something i normally do and as a precaution i'm going to take a just a sticky part of a post-it note. I'm just gonna fold it around that uh, bucktail just to kind of make sure that it doesn't get mixed with any of the other colors. So I'm just kind of keep that out of the way. Now you can use um, a few different things. You can use like a twist tie or something, but I find the post-it note to be one of the best things, easiest to work with. So next we're gonna take a little bit of blue bucktail and the original recipe for this fly calls for one third blue and two thirds black on the upper portion. But I like to use about, um, actually reverse that and use about two thirds blue and one third black. So we'll tie in the blue first and we'll just measure that up with the tips of the white so that they're aligned. And we'll start pulling that back and we'll just make sure that the uh, hair doesn't ride around to the side. Again, you want to make sure that it kind of stays up on top. You can kind of see where that paper comes in handy. We're keeping that separation between the white and the blue here. And we'll just bind that down. And again, once we get near the end, we'll clip that off. You just want to be careful you don't have any creep back into the body. I've found sometimes you can kind of, every time you add a material, your head starts getting a little bigger, a little bigger. Just want to be aware of that. And our final color for bucktail, it's going to be a little bit of black. I'm going to take about one third of the, or about half the amount of the blue. Put another piece of paper there, just to kind of keep the blue and the black separated. And we'll take our thread up behind the eye again and we'll bind that down and again you want to just make sure that that black stays on top of the blue because it's going to be sort of an inner color trim off the ends and we'll go ahead and we'll bind all that bucktail down and make sure that it's as compressed as we can get it now one thing i should mention that i don't do uh, but a lot of people, when they're tying this style of fly, they will use a, a tube, like a uh, an empty pen or some sort of straw to kind of push back the uh, bucktail. That's totally fine. It's just not something I've been using. And so then we're going to take our first color back. So we're going to tie our black back first. And you want to kind of try and pull all those hairs back together. And when you've got them fairly good. You can add a couple wraps of thread. You can give that a bit of tension just to make sure it stays in place. Next we're going to do the blue. And what it, my goal for this is to try and wrap the blue around the top half of the hook shank. So you want blue coming down on the sides a little bit on both sides. And um, just add a couple wraps of thread just to keep that in place. And then you'll want to 
just make sure that you check both sides to make sure that that's lined up. That looks pretty good. And then we're gonna fold back our white. And again, we're just going to pull all the hair back. We'll split it between each side of the hook point. And we'll we're kind of pressing down and pulling back all the bucktail at once. And then we'll get it where we want it. And then we'll trim away that extra piece there in a second. And if you just wiggle the head a little bit near the eye, you can kind of distribute that hair a little bit more as well. And when you've got it good and everything looks really good, we're going to go ahead and just put a whip finish on that right at the throat area. If you want, you can go ahead and use a red permanent marker on your thread just to give that red band before you do your whip finish, and that'll give a nice uh, full red throat to the fly. We're going to go ahead and coat this with some solar res, and I'm just using the thin. So what I want to do is just put a couple dabs on there. I'm going to take a um, just a toothpick, and I'm going to use that to kind of distribute it around. and uh, add as much as you need. You just wanna make sure that you've got a nice smooth coating on there before you add your eyes. All right, and zap that, looks good. Next, we're gonna take a little bit of red uh, enamel or some nail polish. I like a dark red for this fly. I've seen quite a few with a bit of a brighter red. I, I find this darker red looks a little more like um, uh, the gills that you'll see on minnows. So we'll just go ahead and we'll kind of coat that on the bottom half of the throat. And we're going to let that dry. So for the eyes, we're going to dab in a little bit of yellow paint. And you just want to make sure you've got enough on there to kind of give a nice eye. And part of the having the epoxy or the lacquer or the UV resin on the head before you do this stage as it gives a nice stable platform for the eyes to go on. All right, we'll set that aside and we'll let that dry. And next we're going to add our black pupils to the fly. So again, we're just going to take a toothpick and we'll just take the pointy end on that. I should mention for the yellow, I actually cut a toothpick in half and use the thicker end for the yellow and then I just use the other end for the black there you go you just need a little dot you make that as big or as small as you want and we're just going to give that a couple minutes to dry and once that's dried we're going to add an other coat of bone dry on top just to kind of seal in the eyes and the throat and give it a little bit more durability just zap that and you're good to go if you don't have any of the uv resins you can go with a like a five minute epoxy works well if you're going to go that route i would suggest getting the flies tied up to um, finish before you coat the epoxy you can mix up a batch and do five or six at once so that it doesn't harden them Hey Fly Tires, thanks for stopping by and checking out my fly tying videos. If you enjoyed the video and want to show your support, hit the thumbs up and share it to your social networks. I hope you consider subscribing to the channel, and if you do, be sure to hit the bell icon to get notifications on my latest fly patterns, tips, and reviews. If you have a question or comment, leave a message below. You'll also be entered into the next draw for some of the flies I tie and a few stickers. Until next time, this is Darren saying, keep a hook in your vice. Cheers.